In this video, we'll continue our exploration of logic to include conjunctions and disjunctions. So first of all, what is a conjunction? A conjunction is going to be a compound statement that we make by joining two statements together or linking two statements together using the word and. So anytime you see the word and, you're going to think, hey, I'm working with a conjunction here. The symbol that we're going to use to represent the word and is either the little tent or the little carrot. So when you see the statement P carrot Q, you're going to think to yourself P and Q. So let's take a look at an example of how this might work. It says P represents the statement Sunday is a day of the week. Q represents the statement there is no school on Saturday. So P and Q, if we were to write that in sentence form, would say Sunday is a day of the week and there is no school on Saturday. Let's talk about truth values for these statements for a minute. Statement P, Sunday is a day of the week. Statement P is a true statement. There is no school on Saturday. Well, statement Q is also a true statement. What we really want to determine now is how about the conjunction? Is it true that Sunday is a day of the week and that there is no school on Saturday? Yes, both of those are true statements and therefore the conjunction itself is also true. So a big idea that you'll need to recall and remember for conjunctions is that in order for the conjunction to be true, both statements that make up the conjunction must also be true. All right, I want to take a minute and go look at the truth table for conjunction. Remember that all a truth table is is a visualization of all of the possible truth values for a particular statement. So in this truth table for conjunction, what we're really saying here is that the first column represents all the truth values for P. The second column represents all the truth values for Q. And they want us to determine all of the possible truth values for P and Q. So if we look at this table here in the first line, we're saying one possibility is that both P is a true statement and Q is a true statement. Remember that the conjunction is true only when both statements are true. Since both are true in the first line, the conjunction is also true. Moving down to the second line, a second possibility is that statement P is true, but statement Q is false. And in order for the conjunction to be true, both of these have to be true. So when one of them is false, the conjunction is automatically false. In the third line, we've got a third different possible combination for truth values for P and for Q. This possibility says, well, what if P is a false statement? but Q is true. In this line, again, the conjunction would have to be false because not both of the statements are true. And in the last line is the last possible combination of truth values for P and for Q. What happens when they're both false? Well, we know that in order for a conjunction to be true, both statements have to be true. That's not the case in this situation, and therefore the conjunction is false. All right, so let's go see how we might use this in some examples. Down at the middle of the page, it says, let P represent the statement, coffee is a beverage. Well, P is a true statement. Where possible, I'm going to assign truth values. Q represents the statement, toast is a beverage. Well, Q is kind of a funny, silly statement, but it's not true. It's got to be false. Let R represent the statement, 10 is divisible by 2. That means R is a true statement. And let S represent the statement 10 is divisible by 3. S is a false statement. Notice that where possible, I always assign truth values at the very beginning of a problem. All right, so they're asking us to, for each sentence in part A, write it in symbolic form. Remember that when they say symbolic form, they mean using P, Q, R, in S, along with your negation symbol from the preceding video, and the AND symbol that we're talking about in this video. 
And then in part B, they want us to determine the truth value. Recall that when they ask for the truth value, they're asking us to determine whether the statement is true or false. All right, in number one, they're asking us to represent the sentence, coffee is a beverage, and 10 is divisible by two. And they're asking us to, first of all, write it using symbols. So the first part of that sentence, where they talk about coffee being a beverage, I'm going to represent that part of the sentence by using my symbol for P. The and, I'm going to replace my symbol for and. And the second part of this complex sentence says that 10 is divisible by 2. Well, I can represent the statement 10 is divisible by 2 by using statement R. So written in symbols form, this would be P and R. Notice that this is a kind of a nonsensical sentence. It really doesn't matter if the sentences themselves are logical and make sense, as long as you can write them in symbolic form, which we just did, and then part B, determine the truth value. Now, because these sentences aren't always logical and don't always make sense, you're going to determine the truth value by using your rule for conjunction. The rule says in order for a conjunction to be true, both statements need to be true. So I'm going to go take a look at what these statements are. We said P was a true statement. We said R was a true statement. We also said the conjunction was true when both sentences or both statements were true. Since in this case both statements are true statements, we know the conjunction itself has to be true. So again, that sentence doesn't make any sense really, but as long as we can find its truth value and represent it symbolically, we're in good shape for everything that we need to be able to do in the logic unit. Let's go ahead and let's jump down to number three. Number three says toast is a beverage and 10 is divisible by two. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to represent this symbolically. The beginning part of the sentence where they say toast is a beverage, I'm going to represent that by using statement Q. The connector, the and, I'm going to use my little symbol for and. And then lastly, the sentence 10 is divisible by 2, I'm going to represent using statement R. So written symbolically, we've got Q and R. The second thing we need to do is determine the truth value. Well, Q, we said, was a false statement. R, we said, was a true statement. And in looking at the truth values, the only way this conjunction can be true is if they're both true. They are not both true, which means that the conjunction itself is false. I'm going to let you do questions two and four on that page, and in the meantime, I'm going to skip over to the top of page six where I'm going to talk about disjunctions. Disjunctions are pretty similar to conjunctions, except in order to connect the two statements together using the word and, which we did in the conjunction, in a disjunction, we connect the two statements together using the word or. The symbol that we're going to use to represent the word or is the V. So when we see PVQ, we don't say PVQ. What that means is P or Q. All right, so in the example, it says Sunday is a day of the week. That's a true statement. Statement Q says there is school on Saturday. That's a false statement. But now I want to consider the disjunction, P or Q. Is it true? that Sunday is a day of the week, or that there is school on Saturday. Well, yes, one of the two is true, and therefore the disjunction is true. So the rule for disjunction is a little bit different than the rule for conjunction. In order for a disjunction to be true, at least one of the two statements has to be true. As long as one of the two statements that makes up that disjunction is true, the disjunction itself is going to be true. So in the truth table here where P is a true statement and Q is a true statement, we do have at least one of the statements being true, and therefore the disjunction is true. In the second line where P is a true statement 
put Q as a false statement, we still have at least one of the statements being true, making the disjunction true. In the third line, where P is false, but Q is true, we have at least one of the statements being true, making the disjunction true. And then in the last line where both statements are false, this is the instance where we don't have at least one true statement, and therefore the disjunction can't be true. In the example at the bottom of this page, they're telling us let K represent the statement Kevin won the playoff, let A represent the statement Alexis won the playoff, and let N represent the statement nobody won. Notice that these are not necessarily statements because we cannot assign truth values to them. And so the directions for this are a little bit different. All they want us to do is write in symbolic form. Remember, symbolic form means using, in this case, our letters K, A, and N. We might need to use our negation symbol for the word not, our conjunction symbol for the word and, or our new symbol, the disjunction symbol for or. So in number one, it says Kevin or Alexis won the playoff. So what this is saying is that either Kevin won the playoff, represented by K, I'm going to use my OR symbol to connect. Alexis won the playoff, represented by statement A. In number two, they're saying either Kevin won the playoff or nobody won. Well, again, Kevin won the playoff. I can represent using statement K. OR is my V symbol. Nobody won the playoff. N. Well, if I jump down to number five, either Kevin did not win the playoff, so not K, or Alexis did not win the playoff, not A. And in the interest of time, I'm going to let you go ahead and try number three. You should try number six. I'm going to say leave number four for when you come back to class because I want to talk about that one a little bit more in depth. Although if you were up for a challenge, you could give that one a try. All right, in the meantime, if I said or did anything that didn't make sense, make a note of it. You might want to go back and re-watch the video, um, but we'll pick up more with conjunctions and disjunctions the next time that you come to class.